Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Maria Albina Michael and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister addresses NCC PM rally in New Delhi, says, At a time when the world looks up to India with hope, we have a huge responsibility on our shoulders, especially youth. Filing of nominations for second phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh and for single phase in Goa and Uttarakhand to end today. Over 164 crore, 44 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive in the country. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia to interact with health ministers of southern states to review corona situation today. Supreme Court sets aside Maharashtra Assembly's resolution to suspend 12 BJP MLAs for a year. India and Philippines sign $375 million deal for sale of Brahmos supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles to Philippines Navy. South Korea to take on Japan in Women's Asia Cup hockey final at Muscat in Oman today. And in tennis, Rafael Nadal reaches final of the Australian Open men's category. Daniil Medvedev to meet Stefano Tsitsipas in another semi-final match this afternoon. As the number of COVID-19 cases is rising rapidly in several parts of the country, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, get vaccinated. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain the Ogas Ki Duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-239-78046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that at a time when the world looks up to India with hope, we have a huge responsibility on our shoulders, especially the youth the Yuva Shakti, addressing the National Cadet Corps PM Rally at Karyapa Ground in Delhi Cantonment this afternoon. Mr. Modi said this year the country is celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and when the youth become part of such a historic event, then we see glimpses of our Yuva Shakti who will fulfill our dreams when we achieve 100 years of independence in 2047. आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव में भारत ने जो संकल्प लिए वो निरंतर नई ऊर्जा पाते रहे इसका बहुत बड़ा दायित्व हमारे देश के कोटि कोटि नौजवानों पर है आज इस समय जितने भी युवक युवतियां एनसीसी में हैं एनएसएस में हैं उसमें से ज्यादातर इस शताब्दी में ही पैदा हुए हैं आपको ही भारत को 2047 तक he said, today our youth have taken India to world's top three in startups. The Prime Minister said over 50 unicorns have come into existence during COVID-19 with a value of over 7,500 crore rupees. He said they are all solving problems of the country that are working with the mantra of nation first. Mr. Modi said, today when an Indian sports person participates in any tournament, 130 crore Indians stand behind them. He said, our players do not play for medals, but for representing India on the global map. The Prime Minister said, even during Corona, our country showcased its indomitable spirit in fighting the virus. He said, no power of the world can stop the country whose youth starts moving ahead, putting the nation first. Mr. Modi said, now the daughters of the country are taking admission in scenic schools and are flying fighter planes in the Air Force. He said, it should be our effort that more girls be included in NCC. The Prime Minister urged NCC cadets to make teams in their city, districts, to bring larger change in the society, just as they successfully conducted the Puneet Sagar Abhiyan. He said from today till the next 25 years, we have to align all our actions, keeping our nation in mind. Mr. Modi said we have to take Atman Nirbhar Bharat and vocal for local to newer heights. Aap sabhi huwa vocal for local ke abhiyan mein bahut badi bhoomi ka nibha sakte hai. Agar Bharat ke yuwa thaan le ki jis cheek ke nirmaan mein 
किसी भारतीय का श्रम लगा है किसी भारतीय का पसीना बहा है सिर्फ वही चीज इस्तेमाल करेंगे तो भारत का भाग्य तेज गति से बदल सकता है The Prime Minister said we are living at a time of digital revolution and today on one hand there are wonderful possibilities related to digital technology and information on the other hand there are dangers of misinformation he added that NCC cadets can run an awareness campaign for this Mr Modi said as a cadet they should be free from drugs and at the same time keep their campus free from it He said they must also help their friends who are not in NCC NSS to break drug addiction. Mr Modi said today to fulfill his responsibilities as the Prime Minister of India he drew his strength from the principles he learned during NCC training. The Prime Minister said he's proud that he has once been an active cadet of NCC and the training he received in NCC gave him immense strength in discharging his responsibilities towards the country. He said in the last 2 years the government has created 1 lakh new cadets in the border areas of the country. Mr Modi expressed happiness that simulation technology is being used to train the NCC cadets and even in national education policy 2020 90 universities are giving the option of NCC as an elective subject. On the occasion the prime minister inspected the guard of honor reviewed march past by ncc contingents and also witnessed the ncc cadets displaying their skills in army action slithering micro light flying parasailing as well as cultural programs the best cadets received medal and baton from the prime minister the rally is the culmination of the ncc republic day camp and is held on the 28th of january every year In Uttar Pradesh a total of 623 candidates have been left in the fray for the first phase of the assembly elections 58 constituencies spread across 11 districts of western UP will go to polls in this phase on the 10th of February the filing of nominations for the second phase will end today the second phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh will be conducted on the 14th of February in 55 assembly constituencies from 9 districts Nomination process for the third phase of polling on the 20th of February is also underway. The process of filing of nominations for the fourth phase began yesterday. A total of 14 nominations were filed on the first day. The last date of filing nominations for this phase is the 3rd of February. Scrutiny will be held on the 4th of February and the last date of withdrawal of the candidature is the 7th of February. The fourth phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh will be held on the 23rd of February in 59 assembly constituencies spread over 9 districts including 16 assembly constituencies reserved for the scheduled castes. In addition, single phase polling in the two states of Goa and Uttarakhand will be held simultaneously. 40 seats in Goa and 70 seats in Uttarakhand will go to polls together in this phase. for this phase nominations can be filed till today and scrutiny will be undertaken on the 29th of january last date for withdrawal of name will be the 31st of january bjp today released and the list of two candidates for assembly polls in uttarakhand former uttarakhand congress chief kishore upadhyay who joined bjp has been fielded from tehri brijbushan gairola will fight from doiwala Sitting MLA from Doiwala and former Uttarakhand Chief Minister Trivendra Singh Rawat has decided not to contest the assembly polls. Today is the last day of filing nominations for Goa assembly polls. For all together 40 constituencies till yesterday, 310 nominations were filed. More from a correspondent. Aam Aadmi Party Chief Ministerial Candidate Advocate Amit Palekar today filed his candidature from Santa Cruz constituency. Congress candidate Lavu Mamladar filed nomination from Madukai constituency. Anthony Dais Congress from Banaulim, Sevala Waz TMC from Fatorda, Philip Neri Rodriguez NCP from Veri also filed nominations and the process of filing is on. Monday 31st is the last day for withdrawal and then the actual scenario of the election fray will be clear. Can campaigning is on with stress on personal visits to candidates and use of social media mukesh thari for air news panji goa
Union Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia has said that 95% of India's eligible adult population has been administered the first dose of the COVID vaccine. In a tweet, Mr. Mandavia has congratulated the nation for the remarkable achievement. He said under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, hard work of health workers and public participation, the country was continuously moving forward in its vaccine campaign. Mr. Mandavia will chair a high-level virtual meeting with the health ministers of southern states states and union territories today to review the COVID-19 situation. The health ministers of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Telangana, Lakshwadeep, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and Andaman and Nicobar Islands will attend the meeting. Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia has said that in just 19 days more than one crore Precaution doses have been administered to healthcare and frontline workers and eligible people above 60 years of age. In a tweet, Mr. Mandavia said, under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the world's largest vaccination campaign is continuously scaling new heights. Over 164 crore 44 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive in the country. Meanwhile, India's active COVID-19 case load currently stands at over 21 lakh 5,000. The recovery rate is currently at 93.6%. Over 3 lakh 47,000 patients have recovered in the last 24 hours. Over 2 lakh 51,000 new cases were reported in the last 24 hours. 72 crore 37 lakh tests have been conducted so far in the country. Over 163 crore 96 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. The vaccines have been given through the central government free of cost channel and through direct state procurement category. The health ministry said over 13 crore 32 lakh balance and unutilized COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states and UTs. The ministry said the centre is committed to accelerating the pace and expanding the scope of COVID-19 vaccination throughout the country. The Union Budget 2022-23 will be presented by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on the 1st of next month in a paperless form. The budget will also be available on the mobile app after the completion of budget presentation process. A Union Budget mobile app was also launched for hassle-free access of budget documents by members of Parliament and the public. The mobile app allows complete access to 14 union budget documents, including the budget speech, annual financial statement, commonly known as budget and demand for grants. The mobile app is available on both Android and iOS platforms. The app can also be downloaded from the union budget web portal, indiabudget.gov.in. The budget documents will also be available for download by the general public on union budget web portal. In a historic move, the union budget of 2021-22 was delivered in paperless form for the first time. Ministry of Textiles has extended the timeline for submission of applications under the Production Linked Incentives PLI scheme for textiles till the 14th of next month. Earlier, the date of submission of online application under PLI scheme for textiles was up to the 31st of this month. The eligible applicants may apply through online only at website pli.texmin.gov.in You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister addresses NCC PM Rally in New Delhi, says at a time when the world looks up to India with hope, we have a huge responsibility on our shoulders, especially the youth. Filing of nominations for second phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh and for single phase in Goa and Uttarakhand to end today. Over 164 crore 44 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive in the country. Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia to interact with health ministers of southern states to review corona situation today. Supreme Court sets aside Maharashtra Assembly's resolution to suspend 12 BJP MLAs for a year. Indian Philippines signed $375 million deal for sale of Brahmo supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles to Philippines Navy. South Korea to take on Japan in the Women's Asia Cup Hockey Final at Muscat in Oman today. And in tennis, Rafael Nadal reaches final of the Australian Open men's category. Daniel Medvedev to meet Stefanos Tsitsipas in another semi-final match this afternoon. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts.
The Supreme Court today set aside Maharashtra Assembly's resolution to suspend 12 BJP MLAs for a year for alleged unruly behavior. The Apex Court observed that the resolution to suspend MLAs beyond the session is unconstitutional and illegal and beyond the powers of the Assembly. A bench of Justices A.M. Kanvilkar, Dinesh Maheshwari and C.T. Ravi Kumar delivered the judgment allowing a batch of writ petitions filed by the 12 MLAs challenging the Assembly resolution. During the hearing, the bench had observed that the suspension beyond the session was dispropor disproportionate and worse than expulsion. India and Philippines today signed a $375 million deal for the sale of BrahMos supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles to the Philippines Navy. Defense Secretary of Philippines Delphine Lorenzana and Indian envoy to Philippines Shambhu Kumaran signed the contract in Manila. The development is a major shot in the arm for India's efforts to become an exporter of defense hardware. Brahmo's Aerospace, an Indian-Russian joint venture, produces the supersonic cruise missile Brahmo's that can be launched from submarines, ships, aircraft or from land platforms. The two indigenously made advanced light helicopters ALH Dhruv and MK3 inducted today in the fleet of Andaman Nicobar Command in Port Blair today. The induction ceremony held at INS Utkrosh in presence of Commander-in-Chief Andaman Nicobar Command, Lieutenant General Ajay Singh as Chief Guest, the Advanced Light Helicopter ALH MK3, designed and developed by Hindustan Aeronautical Limited, AJL, is inducted in ANC's fleet after two decades. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has paid tribute to Punjab K3 Lala Lajpat Rai on his birth anniversary today. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said the story of his courage, struggle and dedication in the freedom movement will always be remembered by the countrymen. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people of the country and abroad in the Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio at 11.30 a.m. on Sunday. This time, Man Ki Baat will be broadcast from 11.30 a.m. instead of usual 11 a.m. after observing the remembrances to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, on his death anniversary. This will be the 85th edition of the monthly radio program and the first episode of 2022. It will be broadcast on the entire network of AIR and Doodarshan, AIR news website and news on AIR mobile app. It will also be streamed live on the YouTube channels of the AIR news, DD news, PMO and information and broadcasting ministry. AIR will broadcast the program in regional languages immediately after the Hindi broadcast. The regional language versions will also be repeated at 8 p.m. The last date to participate in the 5th edition of Pariksha Pe Charcha has been extended till the 3rd of February. Pariksha Pe Charcha is an interactive program wherein students, parents and teachers from India and overseas interact with Prime Minister Narendra Modi to discuss and overcome the stress emerging out of examinations in order to celebrate life as an Utsav. And now let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of this struggle every day. We remember Punjab Kesari and one of the tallest Indian independence leader, Lala Lajpat Rai who was born on 28 January 1865 in Ludhiana district of Punjab. Popularly known as Punjab Kesari, he was one of the three members of the Lal, Bal and Thal triumvirate, which also included Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Bipin Chandrapal. The trio laid the foundation of the assertive nationalism in the aftermath of the partition of Bengal in 1905 and launched the Swadeshi movement. 
Under it, British goods and services were boycotted with the aim of crippling the empire economically and regenerating Indian goods and culture. Mahatma Gandhi later built upon the democratic struggle during the non-cooperation movement of the 1920s. Though the two great national leaders, Mahatma Gandhi and Lala Lajpat Rai, had different philosophies in fighting the British imperialism, the two had great respect for each other too. Lala Lajpat Rai, in the course of a letter to Mahatma Gandhi, published in Young India, wrote, Although I do not fully agree with your line of thought, I am in substantial agreement with your conclusions as to what we should do. Never before have I been more convinced of the futility of attempts to bring about a forcible revolution in India. Secret propaganda and secret societies in the long run end in the demoralization of those who take part in them. I believe that no nation deserves or will win freedom which is not prepared to suffer for it. When I say that, I mean the suffering in pursuit of freedom and not for lack of it. In India, we have plenty of the latter and not sufficient of the former. Mahatma Gandhi was much disturbed by the death of Lala Lajpat Rai on 18th November 1928. In the Young India edition of November 1928, he wrote, Men like Lala Ji cannot die so long as the sun shines in the Indian sky. Lalaji means an institution. From his youth, he made of his country's service a religion. His nationalism was international, hence his hold on the European mind. He claimed a large circle of friends in Europe and America. They loved him because they knew him. It is impossible to think of a single public movement in which Lalaji was not to be found. His love of service was insatiable. He founded educational institutions. He befriended the suppressed classes. Poverty, wherever found, claimed his attention. He was fearless in the expression of his views. He suffered for it when suffering had not become customary or fashionable. His life was an open book. His extreme frankness often embarrassed his friends, if it also confounded his critics. But he was incorrigible. We also remember nationalist filmmaker Saurabh Modi, who died on 28 January 1984. Modi, through his movies, inspired Indians towards social and national cause. Sikandar, Sohrab Modi aroused patriotic feelings and national sentiment. The epic film coincided with a tense political atmosphere in the nation, with the Second World War at its peak and freedom movement gaining ground through Gandhiji's call for civil disobedience. Thus, though Sikandar was approved by the Bombay Censor Board, it was later banned from some of the theatres serving army cantonments. However, the movie's appeal to nationalism was so great and direct, it remained popular for years, and it was revived in Delhi in 1961 during the Indian march into Goa. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. स्वाधीनता आंदोलन के दौरान भारतीय जनमानस को उत्प्रेरित कर स्वतंत्रता का अलख जगाने और मातृभूमि के प्रति सेवा समर्पण और त्याग की ज्वाला प्रज्वलित कर देने वाले अमर गीतों पर आधारित विशेष कार्यक्रम आजादी के तराने सुनना न भूलें एफएम गोल्ड 100.1 मेगाहर्ट्ज पर प्रत्येक शुक्रवार शाम 4:45 बजकर 45 मिनट पर परिक्रमा कार्यक्रम के अंतर्गत आजादी के तराने आकाशवाणी पर बेस्ट विशेष टू ऑल कंज्यूमर्स फॉर आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव हॉलमार्क इन शॉर्ट्स प्योरिटी ऑफ गोल्ड ऑलवेज परचेज हॉलमार्क गोल्ड ज्वेलरी 
For any consumer related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helplines toll free number 14404, issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India, Jago Grahak Jago. Today is the birth anniversary of music maestro Pandit Jasraj. Indian classical vocalist Pandit Jasraj dominated the Indian music arena for several decades. His legacy includes memorable performances of classical and semi classical vocal music, classical and devotional music, innovations in various genres, including Haveli Sangeet and popularizing the Mewati Gharana, a school of thought in Hindustani classical music. In the 80 years of his musical career, he has been conferred with numerous awards. In 1975, he received Padma Shri, fourth highest civilian award in India, in 1987. He received Sangeet Natak Academy Award in 1990. He received Padma Bhushan. In 2000, he was conferred Padma Vibhushan. And in 2013, he was awarded Bharat Ratna Bhimsen Joshi Classical Music Life Achievement Award. <laughs> In a positive manifestation of efforts of Indian Army along with all government agencies, People's Liberation Army, PLA of China, handed over Miram Tharon, the missing Indian teenager from Arunachal Pradesh yesterday at the Mai border personnel meeting point across Anjav, district of Arunachal Pradesh. In the Odisha Open 2022 badminton, quarterfinal matches will be played in Katak from today. Indian contender Mithun Manjunath knocked out seven-seeded Malaysian Chin Junwei yesterday as Indians captured all quarter-final spots in men's singles in the Odisha Open Badminton Tournament at Katak. South Korea will take on Japan in the final of the Women's Asia Cup Hockey in Muscat in Oman today. South Korea entered the final, beating defending champions India 3-2, while Japan defeated China 2-1 to enter the final. India will play China for the third-fourth place playoff match today. In the Under-19 World Cup 2022, Pakistan and Australia will clash against each other in the third Super League quarterfinal today. The match is set to start at 6.30 p.m. In tennis, Rafael Nadal reached the final of the Australian Open men's category, defeating 7th seed Matteo Berrettini, 6-3, 6-2, 3-6, 6-3, played at Rod Lever Arena. The Spaniard breezed through the opening two sets against Berrettini, but the Italian Berrettini clicked into gear to mount a fierce challenge before Nadal eventually prevailed in four sets. The match between Daniel Madhvadev and fourth seed Stefano Tsitsipas is underway. Now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. The national capital Delhi is experiencing cold day. It recorded a minimum temperature of 7 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 18 degrees. Mumbai is likely to have a mainly clear sky. It noted a minimum temperature of 20 degrees Celsius while the maximum is expected to be around 30 degrees. Chennai is likely to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will vary between 24 and 31 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a partly cloudy sky. The city noted a minimum temperature of 12 degrees Celsius, while maximum is expected to be around 22 degrees. Srinagar will have a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Temperature will hover between 4 and 10 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have mainly clear sky. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister addresses NCC PM rally in New Delhi, says at a time when the world looks up to India with hope, we have a huge responsibility on our shoulders, especially youth. Filing of nominations for second phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh for single phase in Goa and Uttarakhand to end today. Over 164 crore, 44 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive in the country. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia to interact with health ministers of southern states to review corona situation today. Supreme Court sets aside a Maharashtra Assembly's resolution to suspend 12 BJP MLAs for a year. India and Philippines sign $375 million deal for sale of Brahmos supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles to Philippines Navy. South Korea to take on Japan in Women's Asia Cup Hockey Final at Muscat in Oman today. And in tennis, Rafael Nadal reaches final of the Australian Open men's category. The second semi-final match between Daniel Medvedev and Stefano Tsitsipas is underway. And with that, we end the midday news. <laughs> 